Now, wouldn't it be just great if we could build our own world? Wouldn't it be fantastic if we could create a world of abundance, create a world of health and wholeness, of prosperity, create a world where everyone was well and everyone felt this wonderful, loving relationships? Wouldn't that be just wonderful if we could do this? Well, what if I told you that you could? Now, many of you may say, well, I don't know if I believe you. I don't really believe that that's possible. And you're not alone because... People all through the ages have not believed that to be so. Let's go to the biblical text that you read today. Let's travel back in time. Let's go to this setting where Jesus is talking with the religious leaders of the day. He's in dialogue with them and he says to them these key words. You are from below. I'm from above. You are of this world and I'm not of this world. Now he's not speaking in arrogance. He's speaking just in truth to say, my perspective and everything that I look at and how I see the world is from the heavenly realm, from a higher consciousness, from a greater awakening. And you, unfortunately, are looking at everything from the physical aspect, from a, a lower level of consciousness or awareness of all that is infinitely possible in this world. No wonder you can't build. No wonder you can't create. No wonder you're struggling with it. No wonder you don't believe because everything you see is from a lower level of understanding or of consciousness or of awareness. You're looking at the world constantly through the physical. Now, over the past few Sundays, we've been talking about, not being, about being in the world but not being of the world and what that really means for us and how it changes our, our perspective. That we know that we're living in this world, but we're not of this world in our thinking, in our consciousness. We live as human beings having this wonderful spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having this human experience. We're in this wonderful context where we are in this uh, a place of being present in this now, but knowing that infinite possibilities are available to us in the spiritual realm. Jesus reflects and says, it's a place of higher consciousness. I'm from above. You are from below. My perspective is I see all things good and glorious. I see the power and presence of God unfolding. I see infinite possibilities. You see constantly from the limitations of this world and see lack and see difficulty, see challenge, see obstacles constantly. He says, this is why I told you that you would die in your sin. He's not talking about a physical death. He's talking about the, us being at that day-to-day -day experience where we are just dying from within, where we are being dried up, sort of covered up, where that light of the love of God is being diminished in our lives, where we look constantly at the challenges of the world and they seem to overwhelm us. They seem to cover us up and cover up that light of possibilities and say, oh, I feel hopeless. I feel discouraged. I feel like I'm truly dying. My light is dying. My essence is dying. My hope is dying. My faith is dying. It's all dying out because all I can see and look at from this world is from the physical realm. He's simply saying in this is uh, the sin simply of missing the mark. We sin when we are not seeing infinite possibilities. That's right. We miss the mark. Because everything Jesus taught is to see the abundant life that's available to us. But we, oh, wait a minute, I can't see abundant life. I'm discouraged. I see all kinds of challenges in my pathway. I see obstacles. I see things that say, it's not possible for me to build a world of success. It's not possible for me to create a world of health and wholeness and of loving relationships. I can't see it. It's not possible. You see, that's where we miss the mark. Sin. It's simply that word hemartia, which means you missed the mark. You didn't achieve the goal. You didn't hit the target. And the target is this great awakening, this great awareness, this great understanding, this higher consciousness, this enlightened state of mind that says, I realize all things are working together for good in my life. Now, Jesus spoke constantly then of a life of blindness. That's right. Of people who just couldn't see it constantly calling out the blind, leading the blind, constantly referring to the, these moments of blindness where people are saying, 
constantly. I don't see the spiritual realm. I don't see the goodness of God constantly at work. I don't see these things because all I see from the vision that I have, from the pair of glasses that I wear, are the physical world. Well, it's time to shift and put on a different pair of glasses, a different lens that looks and sees from the spiritual aspect all things. Not being able to see sometimes what's right in front of you is one of the great challenges we have as people of faith. We can't see that right in front of us, the unfolding of our highest and best is there. That God has already provided for us. That God has already made the way for us. You see, even as the children of Israel left their bondage in Egypt, moving out towards, marching towards a promised land, they came across the Red Sea and this great obstacle before them, and they could not see a way through. They could not see a pathway. They could not see a possibility for them. And all they could think and embrace was, you know, this is the end. The Egyptians, the Pharaoh is coming after us. They're going to take us back into bondage. They'll probably destroy us. All kinds of things going through their thoughts and minds as they began to think from and see from the physical. But God had already made a way. God had already planned. God had already provided that there might be a way that the waters part for them and they cross through the Red Sea coming to the other side. You see, sometimes we can't see the miracle or the wonderful gift of God that's right in front of our eyes. There's a story of American settlers moving west. And as they set up a camp, they had set up a camp in the Oklahoma dry prairie land. And they were staying there for quite some time and thinking someday there would be rain. Someday there would be water. Someday for this campsite, we would be able to survive. And one by one, they began to die of thirst. Unbeknownst to them is that they stood upon a wellspring. that was just a few feet below. If only they had taken time to think about what was present, what was there, their lives might have been changed. How about you and I? Have we stopped to think what's there right in front of us? What's there all around us? What are we standing on? Well, let me tell you this. You're standing on this wonderful holy ground, this wonderful presence of the divine. That's where you are. And in that presence of the divine, all things have been provided for you. That's right. All things. Do you really believe that God put you on this earth to suffer, to have a difficult life, to go through life without? Or that God is somehow withholding or that God is somehow restricting you from the blessings and infinite possibilities that are there? Do we really believe that's the kind of God that we that created this world? God created this world with great love, compassion, and desire to see this world express and unfold the very spirit and presence of God, to express it, to unfold it, the goodness of God at all times. Now, for those who focus on the physical world, well, it always seems so impossible, and they can't see to build. Well, what happens is, We kind of become blind builders. That's right. Blind builders trying to build something without being able to see it all. You ever try to hammer something in the dark? You know how many times you try to hit the nail and you miss the nail? You ever think about how impossible it is to build when you keep missing the nail? You know how difficult that is? And you know how much you damage the wall, hanging a picture as an example, trying to nail something in? You can imagine what it's like to build a house in the dark. Can you imagine what it's like to build a world when you can't see the possibilities. No wonder so many people are sort of hitting their thumb, hitting their head, hitting their hands, hitting their body. They're missing the mark constantly, making this error, engaging in this mistake, engaging in this mishap of saying, I just am missing it because I don't see it. And in the darkness, I can't see with clarity. We're blind. That blindness makes us become really good unbelievers. We have some great unbelievers in our world today. They're really good at that. They have just convinced themselves that, you know what, it ain't going to happen for me. And I'm going to say, you know what, the power of your unbelief is mighty and great. I counseled a young man who said, you know what, I will never find a life partner. I will never, ever find it. I have dated. I have done this. I've done everything. I've done everything trying to look for someone in my life, and I've never been able to find one, and I never will. And I said, according to your faith, be it so, because your unbelief in this possibility has made it so true. 
you are a very good unbeliever. Because what you're actually doing in the unbelieving is believing in the negative. Believing in that which you proclaim is impossible. It becomes impossible for you. With this outlook, with this blindness, with this sense of ignorance about how the spiritual works in our life, in our world, we sometimes create a world that is full of all kinds of challenge and hardship because we keep professing, keep believing in our darkness, trying to build something and missing the mark. Missing the mark that we're called to a higher level of understanding, a higher consciousness, to look at every day from a different perspective. We find this within the scripture in Matthew chapter 13, verse 57. That is, Jesus goes to his hometown, Nazareth. He's the hometown boy returning. And in his own town, in his own household as a prophet, he's there without any honor. No one seems to respect. No one seems to honor. Who's this Jesus? He's the kid from what? Fifth grade? You know, that little boy? You know, that Jesus? He's, you know, he's come back to Nazareth. What's he doing? You know, he's that, wasn't he that little carpenter's son? What is that little kid with the hammer and the nail? What was, now he's what, this miracle worker? And because of their unbelief, the scripture says, Jesus did not perform miracles because of their unbelief. Here's the challenge. When we engage in that spirit of non-believing, when we engage in that spirit of thinking all things are, Im are impossible, we then miss the mark. And we limit that energy, that very presence, that divine unfolding of the goodness. We can't see what's right there. It doesn't unfold for us. It doesn't manifest. And we have the difficulty of building a world, creating a world of abundance, blessing, health, and wholeness. We keep missing the nail with the hammer. So how do you build and how do you create? Well, first, let's just say we've got to see. We've got to turn some light on, don't we? Shed some light on something so you can see where you're headed, see what you're doing, see how to, uh, what your actions are all about. The scripture says, if thy eye be single, it's talking about that very consciousness. It's not about one eye or having one eye or an eye that's not married or uh, partnered up. It's simply talking about the singleness, the focus and the direction of your eye. That means that very consciousness that you see the world in a single focus, not in a duality, not in a good and evil, but in a sense of the all good. If your eye, if how you look, if how you see every circumstance, if you see everything unfolding with the single eye that says, I see the good unfolding in this scenario, in this experience that I'm going through. That begins with a complete change of thinking, of consciousness, from that lower physical realm, moving on up to the higher consciousness. That's right. We could be saying, we're moving on up to the east side, uh, to a deluxe consciousness in the sky. That's exactly what we should be doing. We're moving on up in consciousness. We're moving on up in awareness. We're moving on up. We're leaving behind this physical realm and its limitations and going out in faith. Now, let me tell you this. As your pastor, I'm going to talk about faith an awful lot. I talk about faith because I believe in the power of faith at work in our lives to bring a transformation, change, the unfolding of the miracles, the things that you so desire within your life. For Jesus spoke of it over and over again, for the teaching of the scriptures and the ancient truth are filled with the power of what do you believe? Do you believe at all? Because if you believe, so shall you receive. So we want to emphasize this power of faith within us that we have a consciousness that is moving in the higher realms that says, I believe, I see with eyes of great faith the possibilities that are there for me. Let's look at scriptural examples for our lives. You all know John chapter 3. You're familiar with John 3, 16, I'm sure. God so loved the world. Well, let's take that setting and that dialogue. For At nighttime, Jesus encounters Nicodemus. He comes to Jesus in the dark. And there's a lot of metaphor and symbolism here that we need to look and unfold. Where we find that 
Nicodemus represents you and me. It's our story. That's right. We're Nicodemus. For every Bible story, the key of understanding it is put yourself in it and learn and understand what's the truth unfolding for us. How many times have we come in our darkness, in our ignorance, coming in that darkness, that perspective saying, I don't believe, I can't see, it's not possible. And we come to inquire and want to learn, we're just, but we're stuck in that realm of ignorance and that ignorance has been held quite often by the ways that we've been trained to think. Now, Nicodemus represents you and I, and he was uh, represents the religious side of our thinking, often this based in these physical or literal translations of Scripture or literal believing of so many things. So we struggle. Our friends struggle. People struggle. They say, I find all kinds, I find all kinds of conflicts with contradictions within Scripture. But when we're taking things literally, we do. He represents that person who comes from a level of saying, I think I know it all, and I've been trained to think one way. I've got these blinders on, and I just live my world from the physical rather than living from the spiritual. I have to say one of the great gifts my father, a Pentecostal preacher, gave to me was the understanding that we live in the supernatural. We live in the realm of the supernatural. And when our eyes begin to focus on that kind of consciousness, that everything is unfolding for us in the miraculous, in the divine pattern, in the wonderful way that God is working in the supernatural, in that we meaning the spiritual realm for our world. And so it is that Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night in this spiritual darkness, and he meets with Jesus, and the importance of this is Jesus' dialogue with him, saying, what you must understand is that if you're going to awaken from this darkness, Nicodemus, if that which you're searching for to understand about the kingdom of heaven, it begins with having a new thought, a new understanding, a new clarity. We're part of the new thought movement. New thought movement, you say, what's new thought? Is it a new thing, a new trend, a new thing that's coming out in the world? New thought is simply saying, I think in a new way, a higher consciousness. I'm not from down below. I'm from up above. I'm moving on up. I'm having a new thought about everything that faces that I encounter, that I engage in. I think about the challenge I have, and I have a new thought about it. I think about the difficulty I have. I have a new thought about it. What's the new thought? The new thought is that all things are working together for good. I am embracing the passage of Scripture says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, having a new thought having a new way of looking at everything, moving and up to that higher consciousness. Here it is that Jesus talks to Nicodemus, and Nicodemus says, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who's come from God, for no one can perform the signs that you're doing if God were not with him. And Jesus replied, Verily I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. You're not going to be able to see and understand the wonderful blessings, the goodness of God that are right here for you. I'm going to tell you that the kingdom of heaven is right here, right here and right now. Jesus said, don't look up there. Don't look over here. Don't look there. Look within. The kingdom of heaven is within you, and it's here, present, right now. We often think, oh, the kingdom of heaven is when we die. We're going to go to heaven when we die, but heaven is this higher consciousness. Jesus said, I am from above. We look at Jesus, well, he came from heaven, right? Where is heaven? Heaven's within. A higher understanding, a higher knowledge, a greater consciousness. Jesus said no one can see this kingdom of God unless they begin to be born again. And that born again experience is this having a new thought, awakening. I think differently. Let me tell you this. I have been a pastor in various different contexts, in the Pentecostal fundamentalist upbringing in the Metropolitan Community Churches, uh, a pastor for Unity Congregation, New Thought Congregations, on goes the list of opportunities I've had to share in different contexts. I find people saying, I want this relationship with God. But it only becomes dynamic when there's a change in their thinking. Oh, we can go through lots of rituals. I've been with lots of people who came in a Billy Graham crusade. I've actually been in a Billy Graham crusade. 
That's how old I am. Uh, I've been there. I've seen people come forward. But unless there's a change in thinking, it's just a moment of coming forward in an emotional outburst of saying, I want this so bad, but mm, honey, when it's done, I'm going back to my good old ways. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. You know, it's more than just coming forward to in some sort of born again experience in an altar call. It's something that's a change in consciousness, a way that you think and see and it unfolds for you. The ability to build, to create this world of possibilities. And so Jesus said, verily, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and of spirit. What is it to be born of water and of spirit? Born of water, water reflecting so much in our symbolism of scripture that is of that consciousness, born of a new thought, born of that which is flowing as water flows through our lives. That symbolism for us there is he's painting a picture for us, saying this is the true experience for you. When you embrace this new way of thinking that all things are possible, this is the born again experience. You are born from this wonderful experience of the physical, yes, but now born into the spiritual and awakened to be born in the spirit. How beautiful it is then that we understand that this is awakening to our true self, this true self that you're created in the likeness and image of God. One of our big mistakes is that we forget this. We forget how beautifully you're created. Not just this physical body, although it's beautiful and beautifully created, but that you, the very essence of you, the divine soul within you, that is created in the image and likeness of God, that it has that same power as every wave of the ocean, as all the elements of the ocean in it, so every soul has the essence of the divine within it. You have created in this image and likeness. And when we forget that, we forget then that uh, we can have a new thought. We can think a new way. We can move to a higher consciousness. We can move to a new level of awakening and understanding. For Jesus says, flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. When you're in the flesh, all you can think about is giving birth of the flesh, living from the physical realm, from the physical world. All you can see is that which Jesus said, you are below. But when you are in the spirit and awaken to a consciousness, a higher consciousness, it gives birth to other things of the spirit. It begins birth to say, wow, I see more. I see beyond. I see the development. I see the unfolding. I see the goodness of God here, now, and all around me. You see, it's uh, an ability for us to begin to look from a whole new perspective. And then Jesus says, you should not be surprised by my saying, you must be born again. Wait a minute. A lot of us are kind of surprised by that. Wait a minute. We're surprised by the very teaching that Jesus made so simple that says, if you keep looking at the world from the physical, you're just going to repeat the physical. But if you look at the world from the spiritual, you will birth the spiritual. You look at the world from love, you'll birth love. Look at the world from grace, you'll birth grace. Look at the world from forgiveness, you'll birth forgiveness. Look at the world from a higher realm of the goodness of God, and suddenly you'll be birthing more and more and more of that within your life. For to those who have, more will be given. And to those who believe they have not, there will be less, says the scripture. So if we believe, I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm filled with infinite possibilities. I'm filled with those who have this kind of thinking. More will come. But to those who think, eh, I don't really have that. I live in lack. Things are pretty much the pits. This ain't going to happen. I'll never, ever, ever have the answer to my prayer. Well, to those, they will have less. Because what they have will slip through them in this kind of thinking. So here's what we must begin to see. We must understand this in this higher consciousness, that you already are what you seek to attain. Wow. You are already what you desire to be. You're already that. 
what, what, what do you mean? I desire to be successful. I'm not successful today. Oh, but you already are because you just have to awaken to that success. I desire to be whole, but I'm not whole today. I desire to be healthy, but I'm not healthy today, you may say, because you're constantly looking from the physical. But when the eye of faith says, I see, I see my possibility that what I desire is already present, already here. It's here. It's now. And I live from that vantage point. This is our self-realization, our realization of who we are as a divine creation. We're realizing it. We're awakening that, wait a minute, we've been created with the all good, right? We read the scripture of God's story of creation and God created and said, it's all yeah, okay. No, it said it's good, right? It's good. That's the good that you were created in. It's already good. You don't need to try to say, I'm going to work to be good. I'm going to try to be good. I need to get some goodness. Can you give me some goodness? How about if I get some goodness from you? You see, we're looking to get goodness on the outside, but wait a minute. It's already within. You were created in good. Created in goodness. Everything you desire is already there. You just have to realize it and let it unfold. It's already there. I hear people constantly say, Pastor, pray for me that I'd have more patience. I just want more patience. I said, honey, you got all the patience you need. You just need to exercise it. Oh, pray for me that I get more, that I could be more loving. I just want to be more loving. I, I, I'm having troubles being loving. And you have all the love you need. You just need to release, let go, allow, let it be, as we sang today. You see, you can't build your world of success without understanding that you were already created perfect and good. It's already there. You were created in original blessing, not original sin, but blessing. Scripture didn't say God created you and I made you all as dirty, rotten sinners. Mm -hmm. I made you all that way. Uh huh. You are bad to the bone. That's what I made. I created you in that way. Uh huh. Scripture, it says God created us in the goodness, in the blessing of goodness. That's how we are created, and we lose sight of that. So when we understand it, that's our self-realization. The simple error is that we then don't believe that we have already built a world of abundance, a world of love, a world of success, a world of prosperity. It's already there. We just need to begin to see it. And it's unfolding. So it begins by sort of thinking from your wish fulfilled versus thinking about your wish. So it begins to thinking from your desire fulfilled already manifested in the spiritual realm. Your eye sees. I see it already unfolding. I see this job I want. I'm living in this job I want. I'm working in this job. I, what job? The job I want. I already live it. I embrace it. I see it. And I'm living from the wish fulfilled versus, well, I'm hoping one day I'll have the job I want because I sure don't have it now and I probably will never get it. And I don't know if it'll ever happen. As a pastor, I work with a lot of couples who are planning their wedding. And as they lay out all their plans for a wedding, quite often I'll say, what does the day look like? Oh, well, we got all kinds of plans. We got all kinds of things. I don't even know where to start. And I said, stop. What does your wedding day look like? What do you see? Well, I see us standing before an altar. I see beautiful flowers. I see flower girls and ring bearers. I see groomsmen and bridesmaids. I see some blush colored dresses. Blush and bashful. Okay, there you go. Uh, whatever. I see all these kind of things. I see uh, a crowd in attendance. I see all the wonderful cake and reception food. I hear the music. I see the dancing. I see people having a great time. Okay, now you know how to plan because you've already gone to the wish fulfilled. You've already moved to the vision of that which you desire. You've already seen it as a reality. Now work your way back from there. And this is the way it is in our life of faith, that we begin to say, I see, if I'm going to build this world, I see it already. And I live from that perspective. 
So what is it that you want to see? Well, I see my world prosperous and successful. I see myself whole and in loving relationship. Really, what does it look like? Let's talk about it from there and live from that perspective outward. Now, here's the challenge because a lot of people say, well, you know, pastor, I've tried that. I've tried to assume. I tried to live out the law of assumption. I've tried to assume that, you know, all things are working together for good. And I've tried to believe that, you know, I already got this job or I already have this loving relationship or I already got this house or I've already got this health and wholeness and I've already got all these things that I desire within my heart. And I just tried to assume that, but they didn't manifest for me. Here's the deal. I want you to know that if it hasn't manifested for you, it's not because God is withholding. It's not because that blessing is not there for you. Quite often, it is simply that we don't feel it's natural for us to receive it. We don't think it's natural. Well, I would like this new job, but you know what? It just doesn't feel natural. I would never be in that position. I could never have that kind of employment. I could never have that kind of salary. That sounds too good to be true. I'd like to think from a bit. It just doesn't feel natural for me. You may say, I want to live in abundance, but you know, hey, you know, I'm just average Joe. I don't know. It doesn't feel natural for me to think of God's blessing unfolding in wonderful and unlimited ways in my life. Oh, I'm just a humble person, simple Joe. Mediocrity is my name and my game in life. I may want healing, but I don't know if it feels natural because I've been sick so long. What's natural for me is to just be sick. And I just, I'd like to assume, I'd like to believe, I'd like to think from that, but I just feel it's not really natural for me. So in your imagination, our faith ignites and we begin to visualize what is natural for us. I'm going to tell you this, that the Bible is all about incorporating the power of visualization and imagination within your life because this is what faith is all about. You've got to visualize, you've got to imagine You've got to put it there before you. Imagine this. Suppose you're tied to a tree and you can't move. And you don't feel like, well, I'd like to run, but it's not natural for me to run. I'm tied up and I'm confined and I just can't get loose. But in your mind, you could see yourself running, couldn't you? You could see yourself free. And suddenly you could live from that perspective that which you hold in mind. So it is that it begins to unfold for us in our lives that when we begin to imagine and we begin to visualize, just like planning your wedding day, what does it look like? What does it look like to walk in God's blessing? What does it look like to build the world of prosperity and blessing you desire? What does it look like for you to achieve your goals? What does it look like when you're there and living in health and wholeness? What does it look like to have loving relationships? Have you pictured it? Imagine it and allow that imagination to be faith that says, I see the unseen. I see my job. I see my new home. I see my spouse. I see my prosperity. I see this. A builder must first begin to see. I want to tell you this. You've got to begin to see it, and then you will build it because it will be there unfolding for you in great way. Several years ago, we moved to this building. Three years, in fact. And we moved here and we said, well, what will we do with our homeless ministry? We had a viable viable homeless ministry at 1379 Tully Road. By the way, the building's being torn down. If you have to go by there, they've already started to tear down and be finished in December. We uh, moved here and we said, what will we do and how do we expand it? And we said, well, wait a minute. What if we just take not only a, a ministry here at City of Light in this location, but we take it to the streets? Well, how are you going to take it to the streets? How are you going to do that? Well, we began to visualize and imagine what it would be like if we had a bus. What if we'd be like if we had a bus? That would be a mobile ministry uh, vehicle. 
that would go to different locations, that would go to different places, that will help to deliver food, that will provide different services. What about if we, what if we took it to the streets? What would that look like? And so we sat down and began to say, this is what we visualize. This is what we imagine. Lo and behold, we found a bus company that had a sale, an auction. And it was one of those auctions that we were doing over the phone. We put our bid in on the internet. We were waiting and sitting there, and I can, David Carter and I and others were there sitting in the room watching and waiting and wondering, could we get this bus? Could we get this bus? And we just began to say, the bus is ours. The bus is ours. Now there was someone else bidding against us. And suddenly their bid began to rise against our bid. It was, oh, wait a minute, we're going to lose the bus. No, the bus is ours. The bus is ours. We see the bus. The bus is ours. And as the bidding went on, suddenly the person bidding against us dropped out. And five minutes were left in the bidding process. Oh, could it be? Could it be? Could it be ours? Is it really going to be that we're going to be able to purchase this bus? Is it going to be available for us at this wonderful price? Could this really be it? And as time went by, three minutes were left, two minutes were left, one minute left, and bingo, it was ours. It was ours as we imagined, just as we visualized. It unfolded for us. Now, where's the bus today? Do you notice it's not in the parking lot? It's at the repair shop waiting for us to pick it up. It's been tuned up. It's been ready to go. The repair mechanic says, it's a great bus. It's in good shape. It just needed a few things, a fresh battery, a serpentine belt. Um, we're going to change the filters for you. We're going to change the oil. It's tuned up, ready to go. It's ready to roll. Now we're saying, wow, okay, we're ready to gear up and get this bus back out on the streets in this ministry, that which we visualized. Oh, but wait a minute. We've got obstacles. We've got all kinds of challenges. We've got to pay the registration off. We've got to pay this, this piece and that piece to kind of get the bus back on the streets. Oh, do you realize it's too expensive? It's, po it's not possible. In the physical world, you're right. Let's just give up and quit, right? But in the spiritual, we've already visualized the bus is going out. And on last week, on Wednesday, I met with clergy from all across the Atlanta community. We host a clergy luncheon here. And 10 different churches were represented. And each one of them said, we want to be on your bus. We want to work your bus. Our congregation will come and volunteer on a Saturday. We'll serve the homeless. We'll serve. We'll prepare. We'll work and we'll volunteer. We can't wait. When's the bus moving? I said, soon. <laughs> soon. When's it moving? I said, I already see it moving and I see you on the bus. I see you in this church on the bus. Unity North is coming. Atlanta Unity wants to come. Uh, Rise Church upstairs, they want to serve. They want to do it. Uh, Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta wants to use our bus. Trinity's, uh, Midtown, uh, Trinity Spiritual Center wants to use our bus. They all want to say, we want to be involved in this ministry of feeding the humble. Let us come on board. When's it going to go? Well, as we visualize. This morning, I want you to join with me in a visualization that we visualize already. All that we need is provided for. And the bus is rolling out with teams of volunteers. We already know they're lining up. We already know there are people saying, we want to participate. We don't need to say, oh, it's too impossible. We're a small congregation. We won't be able to do it. Honey, we got so many people lining up. I can't even handle all the people who want to work on our bus. We just have to get the bus registration taken care of. We're looking at maybe about $1,500. Well, is that impossible for God? Well, then we should laugh at that because when we thought about how we would ever, as a congregation, move out of that building at 1379 Tully Road, we thought about the impossibilities as we faced air conditioning broke down, the heater broke down in the sanctuary. It was a $200,000 bill to replace that furnace. And one day, our group of people just said, you know what? We visualized this mortgage already paid off. We visualized that God is already going to pay this mortgage off somehow. And lo and behold, someone came and knocked on our door and said, we'd like to buy your building for seven times what you paid for it. Wow. 
How wonderful to come to this location and to write a check. Here it is. Let's buy this building. Boom. How wonderful. How exciting. How you, know, you see what happens is by our faith, by seeing the possibilities, by seeing. Jesus said, I'm from above. You're from below. No wonder you keep dying in your sin. No wonder you keep missing the mark. It's because you don't see what's right there in front of you. You don't see the possibilities. You don't see the way that God's already made a way for you. So I want to invite you now to join with me in this moment right now of visualization. They were all seeing it done, seeing it completed. How? I don't know how. Because my job is not the how. My job is to trust. God's job is the how. Isn't that wonderful? I love that. I don't have to worry about the how. God does. That's on God's shoulders, not mine. Uh, the universe knows, and all things will work together for good as we simply believe and we look from that higher consciousness. So would you bow your head with me and close your eyes? And follow me in this visualization. In this moment now, I see the bus. Her name is Yvette. She's named after the woman who started our homeless ministry. Feeding the hungry and the homeless. She's in great shape. She's rolling down the streets. She's headed now towards a destination. All things are already provided. All things are in place. Registration, paperwork, everything is falling together in such a beautiful and divine order, effortlessly and with great ease. I see the bus, doors open. I see volunteers at work, serving the hungry and the homeless, providing so many unique and different ministries. I see people from different congregations engaged and being blessed by the opportunity to serve. I see the homeless community and those who are hungry being fed not only a meal, that's nutritious and meeting their physical need, but being fed with love, hope, compassion, treated with great respect, filled with an awareness of a world that loves them, values them, appreciates them, and instills with them the divine awakening that they too are the child of God, created in divine image. I see the bus serving meals, handing out clothing, meeting human needs. I see the volunteers rejoicing in great gratitude for the experience. And I see the bus returning back, be refreshed and renewed, ready to go out for another experience with another group to repeat that which we've just seen in our mind's eye. Now hold that vision, hold that image, and let us together say, and so it is. Amen. Now, do you believe it? Because it's according to the power of our believing. Do we believe that this is natural? Do you believe that this is appropriate? Do you believe that this is worthy? Do you believe that we are worthy of this? Do you believe that this is right? Do you believe this is good? Well, it's all that energy that Jesus spoke about. It says, when we put this into action, our mind, our eye is single and we can build. I'm believing for great things. How about you? Now, the bus is an example. And why is the bus just an example for us? It's just an example of this collective community, but it's an example for you as an individual. That which you believe, so shall you receive. That which you hold in single vision. That what you hold when your eye is single, that what you hold in higher consciousness is yours as well. As we believe, so shall we see. Amen.